Hello, my name is Christian Felsheim. I am the director of Hetwell Photonics Europe and would like to introduce you to the Center of Hyperspectral Remote Sensing Europe. Hyperspectral imaging is a fascinating technology that precisely measures the spectral content of light in every single pixel of the scenery imaged. Analyzing this spectral pattern allows you to remotely identify and analyze the objects the light is reflected from. The potential of hyperspectral imaging is immense. For long, hyperspectral imaging has been well established in space satellites monitoring Earth. However, over the past years, optic and sensor technology, drones, as well as the required software to plan flights and analyze the spectral data have improved so significantly that hyperspectral remote sensing no longer is a technology only for specific specialists, but has become accessible for many applied applications. Hetwall is one of the pioneers in hyperspectral imaging technology. Coming from creating hyperspectral imaging systems for space satellites, and still doing so, we are now offering complete drone-based remote hyperspectral sensing systems that no longer require trained scientists to benefit from the power of the technology. These turnkey drone-based hyperspectral imaging packages now open the door to a large range of remote sensing applications. The technology is proven and ready to use. We are very happy to have found a strong partner to support us in making this technology accessible to a wider user group, GeoConcept. GeoConcept was one of the first who successfully brought advanced geopositioning technology to standard agricultural and forestry applications, ranging from automatic steering systems to precision farming tools. Already yet, GeoConcept has excessive experience using drone-based sensing systems. In the beginning of this year, GeoConcept and Hetwall jointly created a place to let you experience remote hyperspectral sensing, the Center for Hyperspectral Remote Sensing Europe. We want to make this exciting technology accessible and invite researchers, users, application developers, and other stakeholders to join in and realize the potential of remote hyperspectral imaging in whatever type of application whether agriculture, foresting or mining, infrastructure inspection, environmental monitoring or surveillance. The Center for Hyperspectral Remote Sensing Europe is easy to reach. It is located just one hour north of Munich Airport on the premises of GeoConcept. It is surrounded by farmland, which are perfect to fly, offers mechanical workshops, meeting rooms and everything new needed including ready-to-fly drones carrying hyperspectral imaging systems and licensed pilots to experience the value of hyperspectral remote sensing. Please join us and experience this potential in your application. We are looking forward to an open exchange with you, whether you are a researcher, an application developer, a farmer, a building engineer, or run an open pit mine. Whether you need to monitor experimental fields, environmental status, or investigate the status of a bridge, please come and join us for our webinars or, as soon as the COVID-19 crisis allows for again, our on-site workshops, or contact us and ask for a video conference to address your specific need. We are looking forward to discussing your hyperspectral remote sensing application with you. And with that, please allow me to hand over to my colleagues to tell you more about hyperspectral imaging applications. Thank you. Hello, my name is William Rock, and I'm an applications engineer at Hedwell Photonics. And today I will be giving you a brief introduction to hyperspectral imaging and airborne push broom remote sensing. So what is hyperspectral imaging? In simple terms, it is the combination of imaging and spectroscopy. For those of you that may not be intimately familiar with spectroscopy, what does that mean or what is another way to think of hyperspectral imaging? Well, regular imaging, like with your camera phone that everybody is used to, uh, is like taking three pictures, a red picture, a green, and a blue. Those three pictures are put together to form a regular color image like we are used to seeing. 
Well, hyperspectral imaging is like taking hundreds of pictures at slightly different colors and then using all that information to get better contrast or to see things that your color imager might otherwise miss. It can also be used for chemical discrimination or even regression analysis to figure out some numeric things about your data as well. All objects will have a, a spectral fingerprint and that is how that object will absorb or reflect light. So for instance, if something blue reflects light, it will reflect mostly blue light. And so if we look at that on the spectrum, it will look something like the spectrum that you see at the left, and it's blue because the light around 450 nanometers is brighter than the rest of the light that we can see, and so therefore it will appear blue to us. Something that is red will reflect more red light, and this is what a red spectrum will look like because it is reflecting more light around 600 nanometers or what looks red to us. And then finally, something green will reflect more light in the green area of the spectrum, just above 500 nanometers or so, as you can see on the spectral profile at the left. So these are just three example spectra, but you can see how qualitatively different those spectra are. And that is also how hyperspectral imaging can be used to tell the difference between two things that both look green, but are in fact slightly different. There might be different areas of the spectrum where they're wildly different, and that will allow you to utilize hyperspectral imaging to tell the difference between objects that look quite similar for regular imaging. Uh, and again, that is just one of the ways that hyperspectral imaging can be used for a variety of other uh, analyses Headwall's hyperspectral imagers are what are called push broom imaging spectrometers. This is just an airborne image of a scene. A normal camera will divide that scene into a bunch of different pixels, and you'll take a picture of it, and it will look something like what I've shown to you here, a, a normal, what we would call a two-dimensional image. Well, Headwall's imaging spectrometers, because they're collecting all of this extra spectral information, look at the world through a slit. And when you're looking at a world of it through a slit, of course, you're only collecting a fraction of the scene every time an image is gathered. And this is done so you can also gather all of that spectral information. Instead of, again, taking those three pictures, you're taking hundreds of pictures. And so those hundreds of pictures are put onto the camera all at the same time along one small slit. And so for your data collection, how do you collect a, a whole large area or a large scene? Well, you need to fly or move over the scene. And so Headwall's push broom imaging spectrometers on a drone or an airplane will collect a new picture every time the sensor moves one spatial pixel. And so you can see the direction of motion here, as is seen by the arrow in the bottom left corner of the screen, is the direction of flight. And every time that drone moves one spatial pixel in space, a new sliver of the scene will be gathered until a whole image is built up. And at every spatial pixel, there will be an entire spectrum. And one other thing that I like to note that is true for any form of imaging or any form of remote sensing is that there's always a trade-off between the field of view and the resolution. So if you have a small field of view, you will have a higher resolution. And if you have a larger field of view, you'll have a larger resolution. And the easiest way to toggle between a uh, small field of view and high resolution and large field of view and low resolution is by changing the altitude at which you fly. This slide shows that with a little animation here. So when the drone is close to the ground, you can see that a, a wide field of view, or when the drone is high in the air, you can see that a wide field of view is covered. And when the drone is close to the ground, you can see that a narrower field of view is covered. Finally, I like to show this graphic here to help maybe give you a better picture of what it's like when the drone flies over a scene and collects these hundreds of pictures of the scene all at the same time. So here, again, is a, a picture of the focal plane like I've shown in my uh, previous slides. And now if I just turn the focal plane to the same direction that we're flying, every time the drone moves one spatial pixel, uh, a new focal plane is collected, a new image is gathered, which will again be all of these hundreds of images in, along one sliver of the scene. And as the drone flies across the scene, the entire two-dimensional image will be gathered with 
a uh, hundreds of images at every spatial pixel in the scene. And so in summary, as a brief introduction to hyperspectral imaging, uh, hyperspectral imaging is a combination of imaging and spectroscopy, and hyperspectral data can be used for a wide range of detection applications, and software and hardware advances are quickly helping hyperspectral imaging transition from research into industry, and that is some of what my colleagues will talk about uh, later in, in future sessions. Uh, and Headwall is also a leading designer and manufacturer of complete spectral instrumentation solutions for remote sensing, which will be most interesting to the uh, people in this audience, but also advanced machine vision and government and defense markets. And Headwall also expedites progress by providing turnkey airborne hyperspectral imaging packages that are ready to fly the day they arrive. Thank you for staying tuned and please listen to my colleagues as they tell you more about how hyperspectral data can be exploited in remote sensing. Hello everybody, also very well, warm welcome from my side. Thanks a lot Christian for the introduction in the center of hyperspectral remote sensing Europe and Bill for the introduction in the hyperspectral imaging and also in the UAV solution from Headwell Photonics. Now I'm very proud to present you all our software solution, what you can do with this, um, with the, uh, the result of the hyperspectral imaging. That are not only very nice colorized images, you have, they have included a lot of information for your applications. Please let me first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christoph Schimmer. I'm working for Geo Concept in, Co in Germany. I'm uh, one of the international sales manager in our remote sensing department. And my main field applications are on the one hand remote sensing and multispectral hyperspectral imaging, GS survey, and I'm also a licensed UAV pilot. I studied geo diploma geography at the University of Augsburg, and I'm at GeoConcept since 2011. Who is GeoConcept? GeoConcept is based in the southern part of Germany between Nuremberg and Munich uh, in the small village called Adelschlag. It's the headquarter from, from GeoConcept. Uh, the company was founded by the founder and the CEO, Thomas Moore, in 1992. And at the moment, we have more or less uh, uh, 16 employees. And our main application areas are agriculture and pre uh, precision farming. We are partner for Topcon solutions, um, also quarried open pit mining and blast design solutions. We have also a department for MGIS solutions. And last but not least, also the remote sensing department, which one I'm part of it. Now I'm very proud to uh, pr uh, to show you one of our software solutions, it's called Kogis. Kogis is our uh, own GIS software solution and was born in, in the year 2011. And we have the development in, in our house. And one of the main applications of Kogis is the planning, mapping, and evaluation of geo reference data sets. And the, one of the big pros is that uh, the data are in the real world coordinates. And last but not least, uh, you can work with the data and also export in machine readable uh, format like a Topcon and Trimble displays in ISO XML, KML, Shapefile, CSV, or TXT. On the bottom, you can see uh, a hand of uh, some add ons which one you can use in Kogis. One is the basic add on, uh, which uh, one showing you GIS status and GNSS position. The counting add on is to, uh, to, to count different or single plans. The mapping solution you can connect an GNSS receiver to Kogis and you can digitize uh, polygons, lines, and points, whatever you want. And last but not least, here my presentation is the scoring module. The scoring module is important for you to calculate with different vegetation indices. Uh, first, I want to show you uh, as a mapping, mapping module, and the mapping module can, on the one hand, used for digitized field boundaries, and you can see in the screens or in these images, it is very easy to click on a background map uh, to the borders from, from a field, and uh, you can close it very easily to, to a polygon, and you can use this polygon as your field boundary. And it's only a few clicks to generate your field boundaries or area of interest. What can you do with this polygon? <clears throat> you can use this polygon to cu cutting out uh, your, your field or your area of interest from a 
bigger data set and you can on, only analyze uh, the data what you want what you need and for example on the right side you can see a corn field is in, in, in the middle of, of, the, of the united states um, and it was collected by a uav flight with the core line system from, from headwall photonics and it's in the linear range in the spectral range between 400 000 nanometer and with the two, you will get more than 270 channels um, <clears throat> reflections uh, from from the vegetation for example what can you do with the data? Um, on the one hand, as I told you, you can very easily calculate different vegetation indices, which one you can see, for example, on the right side, it's a, only a simple example, it's a NDVI vegetation index, or you can also create colorized uh, georeferenced autophotos. You can see also on the right side. One of the big advantage of COGIS is you have an open index calculator. You have not only a fixed number of vegetation indices, which one you can calculate, you can choose your own vegetation indexes and you can use it as raster calculator, what you want, and you can use it for your applications. Um, last but not least, I want to show you a very easy way to create an application map, which one is most interesting for, for farmers to use it in, as, uh, in a machine readable format. And uh, the application map is in this case is based on a, a, <coughs> vegeta a georeference vegetation index map. You can see on the left side. And you can create very easy in a few clicks uh, homogeneous zones with the same spectral reflectance. And you can you can choose the number of zones, the size of the zones, and it's free and adjustable by the user. And it's not in a black box. It's all the settings can done by the user itself. And the result are the, the most interested machine readable uh, data set, which one you can export to Topcon Trimble displays, to ISO XML, to KML, Shape, CSV, or TXT file. To summarize, uh, the, the Kogis software solution, the, the Kogis is a Windows-based uh, software system. You don't need an uh, 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 internet connection. It's, you, it's not a cloud solution. It's no, no cloud connection necessary. You only pay it for one time, once time <laughs> and you can unlimited usage. And of course, uh, we develop it all the time and you can also uh, purchase an annual and optional updates if you want. And all the modules which one are available for Kogis are free combination and relevant modules. Thanks a lot for your attention. If you have any questions, please let us know or write an email. Thanks a lot and have a nice day. Bye.